वेलकम बैक फ्रेंड्स टू द कोर्स ऑफ ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम इन प्रीवियस सेशन आई स्टार्टेड विद द इंट्रोडक्शन चैप्टर लेट्स कंटिन्यू विद दैट चैप्टर इन दिस सेशन आई एम गोइंग टू कवर द यूनिक प्रोग्रामिंग वर्सेस मल्टी प्रोग्रामिंग सो ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम्स आर ऑफ टू टाइप्स यूनिक प्रोग्राम ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम वर्सेस मल्टी प्रोग्राम ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम इन यूनिक प्रोग्राम ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम ओनली वन प्रोग्राम कैन बी लोडेड इन मेमोरी दैट इज योर रैम एट अ टाइम whereas in the multi program architecture more than one processes or programs can be loaded in memory by the operating system what happens to the other processes in uni programmed os even if there is some space available os needs to shift all the other processes to the secondary disk while in the multi programmed os also once the memory is full os can shift the rest of the processes or programs on the secondary disk let me explain with the help of this diagram here let me take this memory that is the ram i have uh, taken the memory when the operating system boots is divided into two areas what we call those areas are system area and user area in the system area when the os boots it is going to load its own programs that are the kernel level programs while in the user area whenever the user will run any program the memory will be required and out of this user area the memory will be allocated for the process so let's take the user loads the program 1 into the user area and user also uh, wants to execute some other programs but in the uni program os one program is already loaded in memory let's assume that the user area size is 1 gb and the program size is hardly uh, a few mbs let's take 100 mb so even if roughly 900 mbs are available the next programs will be will not be loaded in memory they will be shifted on to the secondary disk by the operating system if the os wants to execute other program let's say os wants to execute process p2 here but p1 is already loaded in memory and that's how the os needs to do the swapping of processes from memory and secondary disk so one of the process from secondary disk uh will go in the memory but before that we have to shift the process p1 from memory to the secondary disk so that's how with the help of swapping os can execute load the pro os can load the next program and then execute it whereas in the multi program environment let's say this is my user area in which i load the process p1 and assume that there is a space available in which i can also load the process p2 Uh, p3 etc till the memory becomes full assume that the memory is full here and now onward the process p4 and p5 will reside in the secondary disk and that's how we call this as the multi programming or the multi program operating system and even in the multi program environment if i want to execute the process p4 then i have to first shift one or more processes from memory to the secondary disk and then the space will become available in memory and then i can load some process from secondary disk let's say p4 here and execute it so here also with the help of swapping processes in the secondary disk can do the execution one point to note here is uni programming and multi programming is not about cpu this is all about memory your ram how many process os can load in memory that uh, it de uh, depending on that we call that os as uni program or multi program let us discuss the disadvantages versus advantages of these operating systems the disadvantage of this uni program os is it is inefficient utilization of memory so as i said even if memory is available other process cannot be loaded there 
so that's how the memory is not used efficient efficiently so i can say uniprogrammed os uses the memory inefficiently whereas the advantage of the multiprogrammed os is till the memory become full os can keep on loading the processes so it is the best use of memory let me explain uh, other disadvantage of uniprogram with the help of this diagram let's say the process p1 is loaded in memory and here is my cpu and io device let's assume that some io device the process needs to do the io now let's assume that the process p1 is scheduled to cpu it uh, starts executing its instructions and while doing the instruction it needs some io now after some time let's assume that this process goes uh, for io to do some io uh, task meanwhile this cpu remains idle so while the process go for io the cpu remains idle and in this case i cannot allocate the cpu to other process for execution why because in uniprogramming i cannot load p2 here or p3 here they will be still on the secondary disk and according to one in our architecture that we have learned in the previous session program must be first loaded in memory so that's why we say that here either i can use the cpu or i can use the io device but both the hardware cpu and io device cannot be used parallelly or simultaneously on the other hand in the multi program environment i have the uh, let's say i have the cpu and io device and process p1 goes for doing the uh, uh, execution first and after some time it goes for io now while it goes for io the cpu has become idle and now p2 and p3 processes are already loaded in memory and that's how i can allocate the cpu to process p2 here so at this moment process p2 is using the cpu and process p1 is using the io device and that's how i can make the best use of this hardware that is the io devices and the cpu in the multi program environment so to summarize cpu remains idle if process goes for io in uni program os or io device remains idle if process takes the cpu whereas in the multi program environment other process can also be assigned cpu if one process is doing the io let me discuss more about the multi program operating system now the objective of the multi program operating system is to maximize the cpu utilization in the previous slide i shown that while one process is doing the io other process can be scheduled to cpu that's nothing but maximum utilization of cpu we don't want to keep the cpu idle even if there is some process waiting other point is other objective is to increase the throughput throughput is nothing but the number of processes completed per unit time i will discuss more about the throughput whenever i will start with the cpu scheduling algorithms there are two types of multi program operating system first one is the non preemptive os and other is the preemptive operating system these are the two important concepts and these concepts will be helpful in many uh, concepts such as cpu scheduling algorithm and synchronization problems also so let's first understand what is non preemptive operating system in this operating system once the process is scheduled to cpu the decision to leave the cpu will be made only by that running process so other process cannot tell the running process uh, that hey you have to hold the execution and os is going to schedule some new process no that is not possible in non preemptive architecture in non preemptive once you allocate the cpu to any process till it executes a or complete its execution or some event it will hold the cpu for example the running process will hold the cpu till this event occur for example 
the running process makes some system call system call is the operating systems function or you can say api now if your program wants to execute some os program which talks to hardware now you have to surrender the cpu that's why when you call the system call when any program invokes a system call it needs to first surrender the cpu so that the kernel level program will take the cpu execute the instructions and uh, then produces the output for that uh, the uh, previous process similarly if the running process ask for some io then it has to leave the cpu and it will go for io device other is uh, when the running process need some resource for example uh, software resource semaphore it has to first release the cpu then only it can get some resource and obviously when the running process uh, terminates or it reaches to the end of exe execution it will leave the cpu let's talk about the preemptive operating system in the preemptive operating system the running process have to surrender the cpu forcefully on some external events for example time out let's assume that there is some cpu scheduling algorithm we will eventually discuss the cpu scheduling algorithms one of the cpu scheduling algorithm is round robin algorithm in the round robin algorithm every process will get only fixed amount of time in cpu let's assume that 10 uh, milliseconds if there are let's say five processes waiting for cpu and first i allocate uh, process uh, cpu to process p1 now after the Uh, allocation of cpu to process p1 it can execute for only 10 milliseconds which is predefined by the operating system after 10 milliseconds even if the process is willing to execute its further instruction it cannot do so so in the preemptive architecture that running process on this time out uh, we call it as a time out occurs on this time out it needs to prehend from the cpu and os will forcefully schedule the next process to cpu other uh, events are when the higher priority uh, process arrives uh, to give the analogy let's assume that you are standing in some queue at the ticket window and uh, some senior citizen person arrives now you allow that senior citizen person to uh, you know uh, take some ticket on that ticket window on in that case we say that we have given the priority to the senior citizen person even if the ticket window is busy so in operating system i can say that when a lower priority pro process is running in the cpu while it is running when some higher priority process arrives the lower priority process has to halt the execution and the higher priority will get the cpu one of the algorithm is uh, priority based scheduling that also we will uh, learn so disadvantage of uh, non preemptive uh, operating system is uh, starvation and it suffers from less interactive uh, system meaning is that when you uh, schedule some process to cpu and some other process is waiting which requires only few amount of time in cpu uh, to produce some output to the user then user has to wait for that second process even if it requires a cpu for very small amount of time i'll talk about the starvation in details later also so this is how we uh, this uh, reach to the end of this chapter that is introduction in the next session i am going to start with the second chapter of operating system which is process management